if you follow any news, you might have seen that a Georgia judge over overturned their six week termination ban. Um, but like this article says, we all know that the forced birthers are out here still trying to chip away at women's rights. So like this article says, no one expects a judge rollback of Georgia's termination ban to be the last word. All right, so let's get into this article. When a Georgia judge overturned the state's termination ban this week, uh, some abortion rights advocates praised the ruling and opponents denounced it, all knowing the state's top court could put it on hold in coming days or weeks. Any changes to the policy in Southern states could have an impact that resonates beyond the borders. Most states in the region have bans in place, forcing women who are seeking termination to travel to obtain them. So long as the ban is lifted, it could change termination-related travel patterns, and the ruling puts another spotlight on a contested state at this year's presidential election in which Democrats have sought to make termination a major issue. Here's a look at where things stand. What was the rule? Georgia's termination law violates women's rights to liberty and privacy guaranteed by the state constitution. Fulton County Superior Court Judge Robert McBurney ruled on Monday. Since 2022, the law effectively prohibited terminations beyond six weeks of pregnancy, which is before women often know they're pregnant. That's the point when cardiac activity in an embryo's cells can be detected by ultrasound. The law banned termination once a detectable human heartbeat was present, with some exceptions. McBurney ruled that the law infringed on the liberty of a woman to control her own body, to decide what happens to it and in it, and to reject state interference with her health care choices. He also wrote that Georgia gives women a constitutional right to privacy that includes making personal health decisions. The judge wrote that his ruling reverts Georgia's termination law to its prior status, which allowed terminations until viability, which is generally considered to be around 22 to 24 weeks gestational age. It was the judge's second ruling striking down the same law. In 2022, McBurney declared the law invalid because it was enacted by state lawmakers in 2019 when Roe v. Wade still protected rights nationally. The Georgia Supreme Court overturned that earlier ruling and sent the case back to McBurney to consider the merits of other legal arguments raised by termination providers challenging the law. That paved the way for the Monday ruling. So what's next in the courts? Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, a Republican, blasted the ruling saying, once again, the will of Georgians and their representatives has been overruled by the personal beliefs of one judge. Republican State AG Chris Carr planned an immediate appeal to the state Supreme Court. A spokesperson said advocates on both sides of the debate in Georgia noted the state's high court could keep McBurney's order from taking effect while the state's appeal is pending. It took the Georgia Supreme Court just a week to overrule McBurney and reinstate the law after it was struck down the first time in November 2022. What does this mean for people seeking terminations? Georgia Clinic officials told the AP that they would accept patients whose pregnancy are past six weeks gestation and also that they know that the ban could be reimposed quickly. That could make a big difference in the state. There were about 44 terminations monthly in Georgia before the ban took effect, and there have been about 2,400 monthly since then, according to estimates from the Society of Family Planning. Allowing more terminations could mean that more women who want them can obtain them. It could also ease the flow of patients to clinics in other states, particularly North Carolina, the closest place where termination is legal further into pregnancy. The Gutmiker Institute estimated that nearly 6,000 Georgia residents traveled to North Carolina for terminations last year. How does Georgia fit into the national landscape? Most Southern states have termination bans that are either similar to the one overturned in Georgia or that are in effect at all stages of pregnancy. So when a state lifts a ban, it could be, become a destination for people from nearby states seeking one. It's not clear whether that will happen in Georgia, given the possibility that the state Supreme Court could reinstate the ban. Even before this week, Georgia, a hotly contested state in the presidential election, has been a flashpoint in the political debate 
over reproductive rights. Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris traveled there last month to highlight reporting that two women in the state unalived after they didn't get proper medical treatment for complications for taking the smomortian pills to end their pregnancy. The vice president used her, the occasion to blast her Republican opponent, former President Donald Trump, for appointing justices to the Supreme Court who cleared the way for states to impose bans. After Monday's ruling, it leaves 13 states with bans on a smomortian at all stages of pregnancy and three that barred them after the first six weeks or so of pregnancy. So basically, after reading this, I am totally not confident that this is going to stick and stay. But you guys go ahead and weigh in. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Now we have reproductive health news coming out of California. Apparently, a Catholic hospital was like, nope, nope, we're not going to provide any emergency care for this woman. So this article is titled, California Sues Catholic Hospital for Denying Woman Emergency Termination. California's AG on Monday sued a Catholic hospital accused of refusing to provide emergency care in February to a woman whose water broke prematurely putting her at risk of potentially life-threatening infection and hemorrhage. The Democratic Attorney General Rob Bonta accused Providence St. Joseph Hospital in Eureka of discriminating against pregnant patients and, uh, and violating the state's law requiring hospitals to provide necessary emergency care. The lawsuit filed in Humboldt County Superior Court seeks a court order to stop the hospital from denying medically necessary terminations in the future, as well as civic penalties. Providence is deeply committed to the health and wellness of women and pregnant patients and provides emergency services to all who walk through the doors in accordance with state and federal law. A Providence spokesperson said in an email, adding that the hospital was reviewing the lawsuit. The spokesperson's statement also said the hospital was heartbroken over the chiropractor Anna Nusslock's experience at the facility. Nusslock, who was pregnant with twins, was driven to another hospital 12 miles away and was dangerously hemorrhaging by the time she reached the operating table, according to the lawsuit. At a news conference on Monday, Nusslock said that doctors at Providence agreed that she needed a termination to avoid life-threatening complications. However, doctors said that they could not provide one because the Catholic-affiliated hospital's policy prohibited any intervention while they could hear fetal heart tones unless her life was in immediate danger, Nusslock added. Before she left for the nearby Mad River Community Hospital, a nurse gave her a bucket of towels in case something happens in the car, Nusslock said. The hospital's policy inflicted on me needless protracted pain, bleeding, and trauma. Bonta's, I'm sorry, Bonta said Nusslock's ordeal was reminiscent of women's experiences in Republican-led states where termination is banned. In California, Bonta added, the law is clear that hospitals must provide a termination if it is medically necessary. In a blue state, blue states are not red states. Blue states are not forced birther states, but these, these crystal fascists believe that a woman needs to be on death's door, even when the pregnancy isn't viable. We need hospitals to follow the law at the bare minimum, Bonta said. That is not too much to ask. If you are a human being, you can see how cruel this was. The case is the latest in a series of legal battles over emergency termination in the wake of the U.S. Supreme Court's 2022 ruling that allowed states to ban the procedure. For instance, a Kansas woman in July sued the University of Kansas health system for refusing to give her a medically necessary termination in 2022. The case is pending. The U.S. Supreme Court in June upheld a lower court's ruling that federal law on emergency care overrides Idaho's near total ban in medical emergencies, but litigation over the issue is expected to continue because Idaho hospitals and their legislatures think that a woman needs to just about be dying or should be able to die without care. Like literally, what what are these people thinking and why do they just disregard the humanity of women so much? Like ladies that are in these um, 
these states and men that actually care about women, y'all really need to be thinking about making an exit plan from these states. All right, now let's move into Louisiana, a forced birther state. All right, doctors issue stark warnings as Louisiana re um, reclassifies some abortion pills. Two combinations of abortion pills are, as of Tuesday, classified as controlled substances in Louisiana due to a first of its kind law that medical professionals warn will endanger the lives of women by restricting medication used to treat postpartum hemorrhage and other conditions. Um, Louisiana, which already bans uh, some abortion, passed a law reclassifying mifeprestone uh, and misoprostol as Schedule Four drugs, a designation typically reserved for drugs that carry a risk of abuse or dependence. Okay, people caught with the drugs without a valid prescription could face up to five years in prison, although pregnant women who procure it for their own use are exempted from punishment under the law. Although the drugs are typically used in U.S. medications from abortions, they are also regularly used in an array of other circumstances, such as to help with uh, miscarriage management, treat ulcers, and soften the cervix during labor and other procedures. Normally, at the um, Louisiana hospital where OBGYN Dr. Nicole Freehill works, misoprostol is kept in so-called hemorrhage carts, which can easily be wheeled into rooms where patients deliver babies and which carry medications normally used to treat hemorrhaging, including misoprostol. It takes about 15 seconds to pull the misoprostol out of the cart, Freehill said. Now, Due to the security requirements placed on Schedule Four drugs, the hospital must keep misoprostol stocked outside of a patient's room. When the hospital ran a drill to see how long it took nurses to grab the misoprostol under the new rules, it took nurses two minutes, Freehill said. A lot of people might go, oh, two minutes, that's really fast. And yes, in the long scheme of things, that's fast. But when you have someone who is actively hemorrhaging, in two minutes, they can lose hundreds of cc's of blood, Freehill said. So those seconds count. I'm definitely worried about what's going to happen to patients who are hemorrhaging. Compared to other wealthy nations, the United States already has a far higher ma uh, maternal mortality rate, particularly among Black Americans let's say black women, before the law's passage, more than 200 doctors wrote a letter to the state legislature behind the law asking him to reconsider it. Controlled substances require more complex coordination by pharmacists, patients, and providers with increased documentation and often longer waits for patients. Overall, this results in fear and confusion among patients, doctors, and pharmacists, which delays care and worsens outcomes. In the two years since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, more than a dozen states, including Louisiana, have banned almost all terminations. However, the number of terminations performed in the U.S. clinics rose, as did the number of self-induced terminations using pills. Self-managed terminations are usually safe and effective in the first trimester of pregnancy. In response, Forced birther activists have tried to narrow access to pills, which are used in two-thirds of all terminations. However, there is no medical reason to reclassify mifeprestone and misoprostol as Schedule Four drugs, Freehill said. It could be five out of seven days of the week that I'm utilizing this medication, and obviously not for some abortion care, Freehill said. I don't see how this is going to help my patients be safer. It's not to help people be safer because these MFers don't care about the safety and health of women. They don't. There's nothing about uh, forced birthers, crypto fascists in these states that say that they care about the health and well-being, considering they allow women to be on death's door before even acting. How many more women need to die? All right, y'all, join the conversation. Let me know what you think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Nonsense.